Record there. Oh, how do we look? Oh, look at that, baby. Wow, look at me. Hey guys, this is just a video, quick video test uh, with the Canon EOS R. I asked my friends at BNH if they had an extra one just lying around so I could try and play with. Uh, and they sent me this, so thank you to BNH for hooking me up with the EOS R to play with for a few days. And uh, I'm excited to try this camera. You know, I started this whole YouTube channel about the Fuji cameras, but I recorded everything on my Canon 5D Mark IV because that's what I had. And the video quality on the Canon camera always looks so good. I mean, look at me, baby. I look hot, yo. Now, right now I'm recording this uh, 1080p uh, because 4K crops in, but 1080p with the uh, adapter on, and I have my trusty 35mm f2 from Canon. Nice little cheap lens, but for a 35 f2, damn, it looks great. And uh, the camera sort of um, has pretty good tracking, eye tracking and everything. So I'm testing that out as well. I'm comparing it to the Sony a7 III. But this quick test, I just wanted to see how it would look with a couple of different lenses. Now in a future video, I'll go through what I feel about this camera. But for right now, I mean, this may be a perfect YouTube camera for people. It's got a great flip out screen. I can see myself right there. The image quality from uh, the Canon color straight out of camera. I didn't do anything. All I did was put uh, a temperature on here. No finagling, no uh, post-processing. So let's throw on a couple of lenses and see if this would work for YouTube. Ho oh, ho, look at this, baby, how do I look? So this is the 50 millimeter 1.2 from Canon. This $2,500 lens is magical. Man, that looks amazing, look at me. I'm super bocalicious. So if I stick my, my <laughs> if I stick my head out, like my arms are bocalicious. Look. So that's amazing. This is 1.2, the 50 millimeter 1.2, and it can track your face. I mean, the face tracking when I used my 5D Mark IV was completely awesome. Now with face tracking, I autofocus to do videos. Let's try to fool it, yo. Let's try to fool it. Oh! Ah, a little slow there. Eh. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I have to play around with the features and figure out what best uh, autofocus. But at 1.2 here, I wouldn't shoot a video at 1.2. Let's test rolling shutter head. Here we go. Now before we test it, remember how the Fujifilm performed with the same test, rolling shutter head test. Your lens is gonna kind of, oh my gosh, look at, look at this rolling shutter. Terrible. All right, here we go. Rolling shutter head. Wow, that's, that's, that's really good. And here's what's cool. I know when I shoot with my Fuji film and I put my hand up, the camera will grab my hand. But right now, uh, the camera, let me take a little video of it. So you see it's got a little, it's got a nice little box around my eye as I tuck there. So I love using my Fuji film X-T2. However, it's a little hand nervous. Every time my hand goes up, it gets a little scared. So I like that this locks on the eye and looks amazing. Let's try the 16 to 35 f4 with image stabilization. I lied, I totally lied. Okay, I lied. Uh, this is the Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4 lens. Now this lens does not work on my Sony a7 III for video. So let's check it out with the Canon. Yeah, it totally tracks, totally looks good. So this is a much cheaper option than the uh, the new RF 51.2. That's a very expensive lens. So if you happen to have the Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4, well that looks bulkalicious. Let's do the flying test. Damn, that looks. Is that too bulkalicious? Is that too crazy? Let's see what 2.8 looks like on a 50 for video. 2.8, a little bit more manageable, but I'm happy that the Sigma 1.4 totally works. All right, now let's put on a 16 to 35 F4. Hi guys. <laughs> you can see my microphone. Also, I got a new microphone. I've been trying out, I purchased a new microphone. I may make a video on this, but I've been trying to up my audio game. So this is the first video with this microphone. I'll do a video on this guy, 16 to 35. We're gonna have to get closer. <clears throat> 
<laughs> it's good. I was in 1080 there. You don't want to be 4K up in there. But what's great about the uh, 16 to 35, it does go to 35. So we can compare this to the original shot that I had. A little less bokeh in the background than the last clip. It looks great. The camera looks fantastic. Uh, we're going to have to go to 2.0 to be super cinematic here. Having a flip out screen is invaluable if you're doing YouTube videos. Um, I must say that when I unboxed my 5D Mark IV, that's the last camera, I, uh, Canon camera that I bought with my own money, there was no emotional impact at all opening up the box. I was coming from the 5D Mark III to the 5D Mark IV just for work. Unwrapped it, checked it, got right to work. I will say unboxing the EOS R was a little bit of that tingy excitement, like when I unboxed the Sony a7 III or the X-T2 or the X-T20 when I got those guys. But those of you that are like that, that you you know your camera is not just a tool, you kind of love your camera or want to love your camera. I had uh, opening it was, I gotta admit, was like a little bit of, of an excitement. And the camera felt really great in the hand right away and looked beautiful. So I look forward to trying it. I know there's quirks with this camera, so I'm gonna try to be as open-minded as possible as I review it. Um, especially, we're so different. If you're someone who's starting out and you're just a consumer and you wanna take pictures on vacation, I think this camera is amazing, it's perfect. But I gotta keep an open mind because I shoot studio flash, I shoot flash on location. Also, the demands for quickness for me personally and switching between things better be super intuitive. I know that, that this camera is gonna take a little bit of hit on that from my my eyes, but my level of shooting is just like how I talk. So <laughs> no camera can keep up with that. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Oh man, I like that screen. <laughs>